Good day. Today we're going to look at this Thor modulator. It is a four channel modulator so that you can take four video sources and even if you want to you can get multiple units like this and stack them so if you're having a master antenna system or you want to combine it with an existing cable system uh, it has a worldwide feeds it has DVBC, Annex A, B Digital, Qualm which is common in North America and as well as ATSC which is very common in North America and DVBT which is a very common Europe and many other parts of the world uses DVBT and ISDB-T formats. So this will do resolutions of 1080p, 1080i, 720p, 576 and 480i. And it's a very easy setup. Uh, we'll do a, a look at this in the unboxing. Here's the box of the unit itself by Thor Broadcast, thorbroadcast.com. And their technicians also have a YouTube channel where you can look at some of these units. So here it has uh, DVD players. You can use whatever you want. Obviously, me being the satellite nerd, I'm going to have multiple satellite receivers using various feeds and then uh, sending them out. You can also, I've hooked up my computer up to it. It can work with that if you're using a video streaming source, a laptop computer, Raspberry Pi, whatever you want to hook up to this thing as a video source, it will work. And the big thing there is uh, you just split it to multiple TVs. So that something like this could work on uh, churches, cruise ships, anything where you want to send multiple video sources along one cable. That's the one thing too, it's one coax cable one coax cable and it will send it all through. That's pretty good. NMS uh, connector, which is the uh, network connector. There's HDMI cables that come with it. The manual. This is definitely much bigger than my uh, last uh, modulator that I reviewed, the one channel modulator, but of course this is a multi-channel modulator. So the front part, obviously you got your controls here, you'll have your display, and you can configure it with the control buttons, and this unit compared to the other unit, it has a lot more control features on the front. Of the, uh, mod of, the, of the modulator. You'll have your channel one, two, and three, and four, and your RF in and out. Possibilities are very endless for anything with an HDMI source. You can kind of see my configuration here. I got some, my computer's outputting to it, and then I have two computers going into it, and my uh, Edison satellite receiver, which is, it's actually not connected to the satellite, but it will just show a, a display feed. So the four broadcast, now this is just the default, let me just get this lower here. Yeah, there you go. You get to the lower level here just because you can't see all the LEDs. So, what I have here is channel one has an HDMI plug in and two. I didn't plug anything to three, and there's four. So, what that does is these little lights here at the bottom will just indicate if the channel is, if there's something going through the channel. And on the back, I just have, here's the power supply. Now I have the, uh, the coax, set out and I have the other two HDMI devices in and I don't have the one plugged in there just to test. So I set it up here. Now this monitor never has the best resolution, just bear that in mind. So I have a, this monitor and I have them set up for mirrored displays and it's just putting out, and it's only putting out 720p resolution so it's not putting out a huge amount of resolution. Just to give you an idea though of how it would work. Now I could I can put it up to 1080 or whatever and it will automatically detect your settings. So there's a little bit of a lag. Any modulator you can have a little bit of a lag. So don't the only thing is I wouldn't recommend it for gaming, but if you're trying to find it, like just play a video and send it through the coax source. I'm just gonna go here. Now you may pay attention to the 21. So it scans as a VAT. That'd be channel one, which is my uh, laptop plugged in and it's just using the output. That would be the uh, channel 3.1. So it's 2.1 is channel one, that one. There it goes in as fat one. Uh, 3.1 is set for fat two. Now this is a, this is actually nothing's plugged into it. So just so I'm gonna back up and show you on the monitor what it will look like. So you'll just have the Thor logo 
if there's no input in the source, but at least it has the logo so you know what's going on. And I'm just gonna push it toward the TV's display. And then part four, which is it's just this computer here that I'm using right now. All right, one thing I wanna to talk to tell you about, about the Union 2 is it has some air vents here and on the side here where the store logo is, you can feel the air coming out. There's a fan built in there to keep it cool. This is definitely, it's designed to be on a rack. IP address, the static IP address will be set. So if you need to change that, now I found out in my situation, I need to change it because my network is set to 192.168 and it was default zero. So zero 188. So I just put it to a, a static IP address that would work on my network. With that, you just go to tscafig, uh, your Encore module network. You hit okay and IP address and then you can edit your IP address there just uh, change it around like that to whatever you want to have your static IP address set to so if you're trying to connect it and it's not working just go there so this is what I use for just go to Wikipedia and uh, it'll have a page here for the uh, frequencies for whatever modulation you're using you'll be able to find the frequencies now they have a, a YouTube page as well for modulator so Pointing that out there with lots of good information on setting up one of these. So I got mine set up right here. Cable going here. So that would be this channel here, which is channel one. And I have it set up for standard J83B. Okay. And it's working on cable and also works on that. Okay. Uh, either the Thor or my satellite receivers uh, background. And there we go. IRC, US IRC. Yeah, there's the Thor broadcast logo there. Uh, different frequency set settings. Sometimes it'll just be a different frequency. So US cable, wham. And there's my open ATV. This is just my satellite receiver. It just has a default uh, output. Now, I, I actually want it on ATSC. And I'll just go with the defaults for now. And we'll put it over at ATSC for channel one. And here's part of my experiment. I'll go to and apply that. It didn't. It brought it up to a UHF channel. So there's my satellite receiver, which is in um, the port one. So that's interesting. When I switched this to ATSC, all the other channels did switch to uh, ATSC. So by default, I don't think it's gonna. You know, you can't mix uh, between QAM and ATSC. There it goes. And so when you go to ATSC, uh, the interesting thing is it defaultly brought it over to uh, channels 15, 16, 17. And I don't want to use these channels because they're actually channels broadcasting in my area and I'm going to combine it with my antenna. I don't want it on these channels. All right, so just to quickly go through everything here. So you got your RF attenuator. So the, what this will do is just increase the amount of signal strength you want going through your system. I brought it up just a few, a few extra because I'm running a lot of cable where I'm at. Wanted to get a little bit more signal to where this computer is that I'm using. Bring that up or down, you just don't want to have too high. So it goes from about zero to 30 dB. Go through everything again, it does DVB-T, DVB-C, ATSC, J-X3B, which is the E. Quam ISDB, I believe that's in Japan. Now there's the encode options. So I got it set up here where you encode, you can change your bit rate. So if you want to lower your bit rate, you can do that. If you want to change your latency from a thousand to 100, 500 or 100, you can do that. Now, if you're in different parts of the world where the TV sets are MPEG-2, you can switch that or AC-3 or ACC. So that's one thing to troubleshoot too right here. If you're going through everything and you're finding your TV's not picking up the audio, switch uh, to maybe AC3 or AC TSID 1 2. Program name will be 1. You can change this to whatever you want. And then you can even change the channel name. So it's, by default, it's VAT 1. But if you want to name it your name here, whatever you want to put on there, you can name it that. And then you can change your video PIDs in each channel. You can set how you'd like to do all that. By default, it will be like the way it is with many routers. It will be admin. Firmware, uh, I do recommend doing a backup of your firmware. So I'll be doing a save configuration, be settings config file, and then I'll just download it here to your your web, uh, your web browser and just save it and there, there's your backup. And that's about it. There's not a huge amount of settings that you need to worry about. It's just mainly the encode and modulate settings to whatever frequency you want to have things set at. So thanks for watching. Please look at the description below uh, for more details on this and please like, share and subscribe.